Hey everybody, it is Friday, April 17th, and I hope you guys have had a great week. We'll have a little campfire chat here, got my little campfire, and we'll go over the big news of the day. Let's start off with kind of a big one. Don't know how much you guys follow the news or not, um, but yesterday afternoon after our chat, uh, Governor Evers did officially shut down school for the remainder of the school year. So there's Governor Evers, there's our boy Mandela Barnes. What does that mean? Honestly, I don't really know. Uh, I'm not withholding information. I, I don't have a whole lot. I know Mr. Ritchie has a video message for us today, and we'll kind of go over that as well. I don't know a whole lot. Uh, what it looks like is we're shut down for the remainder of the year. We're not coming back. Um, again, what does that mean? I don't know. Uh, we're going to continue on like normal, uh, or like we have been doing, I should say. It's not really normal, but what we've been doing, I'm going to keep making videos. I'm going to keep doing, uh, supplying you guys with stuff to work on and, and we'll go from there. So keep sending me messages. I want to keep hearing from you. We're going to keep up with this plan. As far as when are we coming back? It looks like we're not coming back into the elementary for a while. So what does that exactly mean? Again, I don't know. I'm not withholding information. I just don't know. Uh, but I think it's worth talking about. Um, so as of right now, uh, the schools, uh, all Wisconsin schools are closed down for the remainder of the school year. Uh, so what does summer school look like? What is, are you coming back for fifth grade? Is that going to be the first time you're back? I, I, I don't know. Uh, again, I'm not withholding information. I, just, I, I wanted to talk about it and, and let you guys know. So it looks like we won't be coming back for fourth grade. After that, I mean, everything's up in the air. Everything's, you know, I, I don't know any more than you guys do. So I wanted to mention it, wanted to talk about it. Um, to be mentionable is to be manageable. So it, it's disappointing. Uh, I mean, I was hoping to have you guys back. I really enjoyed having you guys in the classroom. I enjoyed seeing you guys every day. Uh, and obviously it is what it is. Um, so it's beyond my control. It's beyond other people's control. It's not good, bad, or otherwise. It's just what the facts are. And uh, that's what we'll deal with. So, you know, to, to, to work through those, you know, you guys have been given some challenges and you need to work through those challenges. You know, become make it a habit of working through challenges and that'll make you a successful individual. So that's where we're at. You know, no BCDs. We're not going to blame, complain, or get defensive. Things are what they are. We're going to move on and deal with them, right? No BCDs. Let's do it. So, having said all of those, I'm going to keep going with my usual thing. Um, Monday, I'll keep going with my usual thing, and, and we'll go from there. So, today, reminder, uh, the IXL stuff will be posted by me and Ms. Sommerfeld. Oh, i got to flip my video. There we go. That looks better. And... So we'll be doing that. Uh, we'll have new ones on Monday. So take a look at those, and we'll go from there. So new stuff on Monday. Just kind of watch those. If you have questions, please let me know. I'd be happy to answer those. But we'll have new math stuff and new reading stuff on Monday for IXL. Hit up those free lunches and breakfast. Great opportunities. Hot lunch on Friday. So hit that up. Should be something good. And let me know if you have any questions. I love hearing from you guys. So let me know. Stay safe. Stay home. All those important things. All right, math stuff. Keep doing that prodigy. Some of you guys are doing a great job. Keep up the good work. I commend you guys. You're doing a great job on that. Some of you could do a little better. So take a look at prodigy. If you have trouble getting logged in, let me know. I'll help you get logged in. Uh, I've helped a couple students over this week if you, because they forgot their passwords. I'll get you in. Uh, Excel is a math kahoot. Hit that one up. Give it a try. It should be working. Some people had some issues, but it's been working pretty well. We'll have a new one on Monday. Reading. Take some time. Read some books. Uh, take a look at those. Eventually, the public library will open again for drop-off and pick-up services, but uh, don't worry about that right now. Hit up Epic. Do all of those good things. IXL. Do those. Uh, social studies. Remember, Senator Bewley will be answering questions from you guys. So if you have a good question, post it on Soccer. If some of you guys have already posted questions. I've seen some really good ones. If you haven't yet, think of a really good question. Post it for Senator Bewley. She will be answering questions, so I'm looking forward to that. Take a look at the guidance and art and music, FIAD stuff. There'll be new stuff on Monday there, too. 
But take a look at those so you know what's going on. You can make the music classes and all that good stuff. So make sure you take a look at those. It's Friday. I usually try to put in some pictures from the school year. Um, there's a little video from when we went to the uh, fire department. What we're doing is we're doing this. Important so stuff. This is from earlier in the year. It's like sparky. Because we're the, we're good, type. good stuff. I uh, got to check out the fire trucks. Got to go through and, and do a little tour. So wanted to throw up a little picture from earlier in the year. And we are reading The City of Ember. We're talking about... Ooh, I think we've got a little clue what this piece of paper might be now. Uh, but here's Lena and here's Dune. Got an idea what's going on here. Uh, and now Lena's going to bring the paper to Dune. City of Ember, here we go. This is the, the, the map again. I keep showing this every day. I think it's important. They keep talking about streets and names and things. But I want to show it just so we've got an idea again. Dune lives here. Lena lives here. Here's the square where everything's going on. Gathering hall, clock tower, all that good stuff. So important things. Um, so I, I did want to just bring that up again. And here's the letter that Lena has, right? So it's very um, broken up. Uh, she's starting to put together some things, right? She thought it had something to do with pipe works and that kind of stuff. Um, but we'll figure out some of it as we go through. I think she thought this was river bank, river something. So we'll take a look at it. Pipe works, I think. Is this Pipeworks, River Pipeworks, something? Um, so we'll, we'll take a look and see what Dune has to say. Chapter 8 is Explorations. Dune had been take, taken to wander the Pipeworks alone. He would, go and use his, he would go to his assigned tunnel and do his job quickly. Once you got good at using your wrenches and brushes and tubes of glue, it wasn't hard. Most of the workers did their jobs quickly and then gathered in little groups to play cards or have salamander races or just talk and sleep. But Dune didn't care about any of that. If he was going to be stuck in the pipeworks, he would at least not waste the time he had. Since the long blackout, everything seemed to be more, more urgent than ever. Whenever the lights flickered, he was afraid the ancient generator might be shuddering of perma to a permanent halt. So while the others lounged around, he headed towards the edges of the pipeworks to see what he could see. Pay attention, his father had said, and that's what he did. He followed his map when he could, but in some places the map was unclear. There was even tunnels that didn't show up on the map at all. To keep from getting lost, he dropped a trail of things as he walked. Washers, bolts, pieces of wire, whatever he had in his tool belt, and then he picked them up on his way back. His father had been at least a little bit right. There were interesting things in the pipeworks if you paid attention. Already he had found three new crawling creatures, a black beetle the size of a pinhead, a moth with furry wings, and the best of all, a creature with a soft, shiny body and a small spiral pattern shell on its back. Just after he found this one, while he was sitting on the floor watching in fascination as the creature crept on his arm, a couple of workers came by and saw him. They burst into laughter. It's Bug Boy! One of them said, he's collecting bugs for lunch. Enraged, Dune jumped up and shouted at them. His sudden motion made the creature fall off his arm into the ground, and Dune felt a crunch beneath his foot. The laugh laughing workers didn't notice. They tossed a few more taunts at him when they walked on, but Dune knew instantly what he'd done. He lifted his foot and looked at the squashed mess underneath. Unintended consequences, he thought miserably. He was angry at his anger, the way it surged up and took him over. He picked up the small bits of shell and the goo off the sole of his boot and thought, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt you. In the days that followed, Dune went farther and farther into the pipeworks, holding on to hope that he might find something not only interesting but important. But what he found didn't seem to be important at all. 
Once he came upon an old pair of pliers that someone had dropped and left behind. Twice he had found a coin. He discovered a supply closet that appeared to have been completely forgotten, but all was held all it held were some empty boxes of plugs and washers and a rusty box that contain, containing shriveled bits of what it must have been once must at what to and a rusty box containing shriveled bits of what must once have been someone's lunch. Sorry, I had to reread that. He found another supply closet at the far south end of the pipeworks. At least he assumed that's what it was. It was at the end of a tunnel with a rope strung across it. A sign hanging from the rope that said, Caved in, no entry. Dune entered it anyway, ducking under the rope. He found no sign of the cave-in, but there were no lights. He groped his way forward for twenty steps or so, and then the tunnel ended in a securely locked door. He couldn't see it, but he felt it. He retraced his steps, ducked back under the rope again, and walked on. A short distance away, he found a, latch, a hatch in the ceiling of the tunnel. A square wooden panel that must lead, he thought, up into the storerooms. If he'd had something to stand on, he could have reached it and tried to open it, but it was about a foot but he, it was about a foot above his upstretched hand. Probably it was locked anyhow. He wondered if the builders had used the openings like this one during the construction of the city to get more easily from one place to another. On days when his job was near the main tunnel, he sometimes walked along the river. After he'd finished working, he'd stay away from the east end where the generator was. He didn't want to think think about the generator. Instead, he went to the other way, towards the place where the river rushed out of the pipeworks. The path grew less and less level at the end, and less smooth. The river here was bordered with clumps of wrinkled rock that seemed to grow out of the ground like fungus. Dewan liked to sit in these clumps, running his fingers along the strange creases and crevices that must have been carved somehow by running or dripping water. In some places, there were grooves that looked almost like writing. But for, but as for things in, of importance, Dune found none. It seemed that the pipeworks was no use after all to a person who wanted to save the city. The generator was hopeless. He would never understand electricity. He used to think that he could use electricity to invent a movable light if he had studied hard enough. He took apart light bulbs. He took apart the electric outlets on the wall to see how the wires inside wound together, and the process got a painful, vibrating jolt all through his body. But when he tried to wind the wires of his own together in exactly the same way, nothing happened. It was what came through the wires that made the light. He finally understood, and he had no idea of what that was. Now he could only see two courses of action. He could give up and do nothing, or he could start to work on a different kind of movable light. Dune didn't want to give up. So on his day off, one day, Thursday, he went to the Ember Library to look up fire. The library occupied an entire building on one side of Bilbolio Street. Its door was at the end of a short passage in the middle of the building, Dune went down the passage, pushed open a door, and walked in. No one was there except for the librarian, ancient Edward Puckett, who sat it behind his desk writing something with a tiny pencil clutched in his gnarled hand. The library had two big rooms, one for fiction, which was stories people made up out of their imaginations, and the other for fact, which was information about the real world. The walls of both rooms were lined with shelves, and on most of the shelves were hundreds of packets of pages. Each packet was held together with stout loops of string. The packets leaned against each other at angles and lay on, in untidy stacks. Some were thick and some were so slim that only a clip was needed to hold them together. The pages of the oldest packets were yellowed and warped, but their edges were uneven and rose and rippled. These were the books of Ember, written over the years by its citizens. They contained in their close-written pages much 
that was imagined and everything that was known. Edward Pocket looked up from his and nodded briefly at Dune, one of his most frequent visitors. Dune nodded back. He went to the fact room. In the section, the shelves were labeled F. The books were arranged by subject, but even so, it wasn't easy to find what you wanted. A book about m moths, for instance, might be under M for moths, or I for insects, or B for bugs. It might even be under F for flying things. Usually, you had to browse through the entire library to make sure you'd found all the books on one subject. But since he was looking for fire, he thought he might as well start with F. Fire was rare in Ember. There once was a fire. It was because there was had been an accident. Someone left a dish towel too close to an electric burner on a stove, or a cord that had frayed and a spark had flown out and ignited curtains. Then the citizens would rush with their buckets of water, and the fire was quickly drowned. But it was, of course, possible to start a fire on purpose. You could hold a, a sliver of wood to the br stove burner until it burst into flame, and then for a moment it would flare brightly, giving off orange light. The trick was to find a way to make the light last. If you had, to light, if you had a light that would keep going, you could go out into the unknown regions and see what was there. Finding a way to explore the unknown regions was the only thing Dune could think of to do. He took down a book from the F shelf. Fungus, it called. He put it back. The next book was called How to Repair Furniture. He put that back, too. He went through foot disease, fun with string, coping with failure, and canned fruit recipes before he finally found a book called All About Fire. He sat down on one of the library's square tables and read it. But the person who had written it, written the book, knew no more about fire than Dune. Mostly, the book described the dangers of fire. A long section of how it was of, about a building in Winfred Square that had caught fire 40 years ago, and how it, its doors and all its furniture had burned up, and the smoke had filled the air for days. Another part was about what to do if your oven caught fire. Dune closed the book and sighed. It was useless. He could write a better book than that. He got up and wandered restlessly around the library. Sometimes you could find useful things just by choosing randomly from the shelves. He had done this many times. Just reached out and grabbed something in the hopes that by accident he might have come across the very piece of information he needed. It was... It would be something that another person had written down without understanding its significance. Just a sentence or two that would be like a flash of light in Dune's mind, fitting together the things he already knew to make a solution to everything. Although he'd often found something interesting in these searches, he'd never found, any, found anything important. Today was no different. He had come across a collection called Mystery, Mysterious Works from the Past, which he read for a while. It was about words and phrases so old that their meanings had been forgotten. He read a few pages. Heavens above. Indicates surprise. What heavens means is unclear, but it might be another word for floodlight. Hogwash means nonsense, though no one knows why hog or why, it would, why one would wash it. Batting a thousand indicates great success. This might possibly refer to killing bugs all in the same boat. It means all in the same predicament. The meaning of boat is unknown. Interesting, but not useful. He put the book back on the shelf and he went about to leave when the door of the library opened and Lena Mayfleet came in. So there's Lena. Now we're going to read The Door to the Roped Off Tunnel. We'll start that on Monday. I threw a little picture in of us reading with our buddies, just for kicks. But Chapter 9, I'm looking forward to it. The Door with the Roped Off Tunnel, we talked about that. He went there, excited to see what that door might lead to or what the deal is with that door. So, looking forward to it. So, now you guys know why I have my fire pillow here. Uh, fits right with our story. I hope you guys are enjoying the story. I am. It's really interesting. And I hope you guys have a great 
weekend. It's supposed to be nice weather, so get out, play, do something fun. Uh, if you guys are doing anything, please send me messages. I want to know what you guys are up to. I'm really curious. Send me some messages. Uh, if you're doing something with Keynote and doing an instant alpha thing or anything like that, I want to see it. So send me a message. Love to hear from you guys. It was great talking to you yesterday. Uh, I talked to a bunch of you guys on uh, Google Hangouts. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Keep up the great work, and I'm looking forward to sending you guys another message on Monday. So keep up the great work, guys. Love seeing you guys, so keep sending messages. I'll talk to you later. Have a great weekend.